Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. is a very lengthy DAF, which discusses the proper text of a number of prayers and tefillos and a lot about Sefer Tehillim. It will discuss words with end with the letters Yud, Hey, Ka. Is that part of the word or is that a separate word? Specifically the word Halleluka. Is that Halleluka one word or Halleluka praise Hashem. It will more specifically discuss Sefer Tehillim, when various different shiras were said, what the proper text of certain brachos are, and a number of other related subjects. So first of all, the Gemara says the word Halleluka Keska Yudidka and Merchavka as in Merchav are all these one long word, or is it separate words? Hallelujah, case ka, meaning the throne of Hashem. Ki yad al case ka, you did the beloved of ka or merchav ka. Uh, which what are they precisely? What are these words? So the Gemara brings a number of Amram which weigh in on some of them, but not other ones. Rav Chizda says name Rav Yechanan. Uh, that they're all that the first three Hallelujah, case ka, and and you did ka are all one word. Uh, so it would be Hallelujah, Kesia, and Yedidya. It's a word. It's not Hashem Hashem. Rav says uh, Kesia and Marchavia are one word. Rav says Marchavia is one word. We say it as separate words. We say Merchav Ka. Kumar says, what about those who didn't say anything about the other ones? What does Rav Chizda say about Merchav Ka? Kumar says, we don't know. Take you. Uh, what about did Ka according to Rav? So Gemara says, well, we know that Rav himself once said that Yedid Ka is meant to be divided into two words. Yedid is a regular word, and Ka is the name of Hashem. So Gemara says, what about Halleluka? According to Rav, who didn't say anything about it, he just discussed Merchav Ka. So Gemara says that Rav once said, I was in the house of my uncle, Reb Chia, and I saw that a Sefer Tehillim had the word Halu written on the end of one column, and Ka written at the beginning of the next column. So you see that they are two separate words. And says this argues on Rabbi and Levi, who has said clearly that the word is Halu Ka, and it means that to praise Hashem with a lot of praises. It's one word, there's no sh- sh- shame Hashem in there, it just means a lot of praise, and the Gemara says that this even contradicts a different statement of Rabbi ben Levi, where he did indicate that the Ka there, the Yud, uh, hey, at the end is a shame Hashem, because he says that there are ten different types of praise mentioned in Tehillim. There is Nitzuach, that's when it says Lam Natsach. There's Nigun, when it says uh, Lam Natsach Min Ginos. There's Maskel, there's Maskel Ledavid, Mizmar, there's Shir, Ashrei, Tehila, Tefila, Hoda, and Halaluka. And he says that the greatest of them is Halaluka because it, it incorporates the word Halalu with Ka, with the name of Hashem. So you see that he is understanding that it is a name of Hashem, so the Gemara leaves this contradiction in Rabbi Shub and Levi's opinion. All right, now that Gemara discusses Halel at length, specifically the Halel which we see on Rosh Chodesh and on other Chagim. So the Gemara says, who wrote Halel? So Gemara says, as far as the Shira that is said in the Torah, Az Yashir, that was definitely said by Moshe and Klaiso when they came out of the Yamsuf. Now what about Halel? So the Gemara brings an opinion here that says it was actually composed by an Avim, or in Klai so at the time they made Halel then, and they told him to say it in any time where it was needed, in any tsar that shouldn't happen, but if it does, you should say it. And when they're redeemed from that tsar, when they're saved, then they should say this Halel. The Gemara now has a brisa on the subject. The Gemara says that Reb Meir says um, that Halel was all said by David HaMelech. How do you know? Because everything in Tehillim was said by David HaMelech. Because there's one chapter that ends, Kolot Filois David Ben Yishai. These are the end of the prayers of David, son of Yishai. That was the last Tehillim he said. It's not the last one in the Sefer, but it's the last one he said. And the word Kalu should be read as Kal Elu. All these are the prayers of David Ben Yishai, meaning to say that he wrote them all. Now the Bible goes further and says, now, what about Halal? So the Gemara says that Rabbi Yaisi quotes a Mechakis. Rabbi Yaisi says, My son Elazar says that Moshe Rabbeinu and Kaisal said it when they came out of the Amsuf. And others disagree and say that it was said by David HaMelech in reaction to things which happened to him specifically. And he says, uh, continues, Rabbi Yaisi says, My son Elazar's words make more sense because if it wasn't composed until David HaMelech's time, what did they say at the time of the carbon Pesach and the time when they shook Lov and Esrig, they didn't have Halal to say. What did they say? It can't be that they did Karben Pesach and Lovin without Halal. It's got to be. And there's another problem, and that's in Halal we have the phrase that uh, discusses the uselessness of Avayd Zara. Now, Klai Yisrael had an, had an Avayd Zara uh, called Pesel Micha, 
standing all through the time of David HaMelech. It cannot be that these uh, chapters of Tehillim, this hollow, was written while that idol was busy standing there. So it's got to be that it was written much earlier, and then it was just part of the text, and it wasn't removed, even though they had an idol at that time. Okay. Now the Gemara has a Brisa, which again discusses this subject, bringing three opinions here. One Brisa quotes Rabbi Eliezer that says that Hallel, that everything that's in Tehillim was said by David HaMelech in response to things which happened to him. Rabbi Shua says, it was all said with a response to things that happened to the entire Kehillah, the whole community, nothing about him himself. And the Chachalim say, some of the things in the Tehillim were responses to things that happened to David HaMelech individually. Those are the things that are said in Lashon Yachin in singular form. Those which are said in plural form happen to everybody. Now the Gemara discusses the meanings of the different types of Tehillims out there. There are introductory words that begin a few of them. What do those each introductory words denote? So the Gemara says when it says Lam Natseach Bin Ginois. That's something which is talking about you know, about Mashiach. Uh, Rishayim explained this is not anything that's in those words. It indicates that it's just a Masorah that they had. When it's Maskil, when it's a Maskil with David, that means that David HaMelech didn't say it out loud. He said it over to a spokesman. The word Maskil implies whispering. And that spokesman said it out loud to everyone else. When it says Ledavid Mizmar, that means that first he had the Shechina on him. That's why it first says Ledavid. First he got the Shechina. And then, based on that, he came up with a Mizmar. On the other hand, when it says Mizmar Ledavid, first he said the Mizmar, and then that brought the Shechina on him. The Gemara says, this teaches you that how does one get the Nevuah? One is how does one have the Shechina um, rest on him? Hashas Shechina. It comes not from laziness, not from excessive joy and laughter, not from talking nonsense. It comes from the joy of a mitzvah. And the Gemara brings a famous mm, Pasuk which supports this, Vata Kachuli Menagain, bring me a musician, Vay Kenagin a Menagain. When the music plays, then Hashem's spirit, Hashem's Ruach, Kilu Ruach HaKodesh, rested on the Navi. The Navi speaking at the time was Elisha. Now the Gemara takes a brief detour from its discussion of Tehillim and Hallel, and it talks about joy, Simcha altogether. Rav Yehuda says the name of Rav, you have to also have Simcha in order to be able to learn. Torah only works if you have Simcha. Reb Nachman says, if you want to have a good dream, you should also go to sleep in a good mood. Says the Gemara, is it true that you're supposed to be happy when you sit down to learn? It's not true. Rav Gidl said in the name of Rav that when a Talmud sits in front of his Rebbe, he should have his lips dripping with dread, like it says, Sefas of Noitvois Mor, based on the Pasuk that says, Sif Sois of Shoshanim Noitvois Mor Oiver. His lips are like roses, Shoshanim roses dripping more, more is myrrh, is not. Uh, uh, it refers to a plant. So, but we read that as not sheshanim, but as sheshonim. When they are learning, it should be noitvois mar. It should be dripping bitterness, meaning you should be in a very serious uh, frame of mind. You should be in a reverent mood. You shouldn't be in a mood of joy. Mercy is not a kasha. The teacher should be in a state of joy. The Talmud should be in a state of reverence for the Rebbe that's in front of him. Or another pshat is that one is. Before you start, you should begin with a joke, something lighthearted. Like the Gemara says, Rabbi used to do, he would say something uh, lighthearted before he started the shir. But once he started the shir, it was all seriousness and reverence. Now, back to the discussion of Halal. So Gemara brings the Brisa. The Gemara says, Who said Halal? Rabbi also says again, it was Moshe and Kaiso when they came out of the Yamsuf. And the paragraph which which begins Leilanu Hashem Leilanu Hashem not for us don't do it for us do it for you that was a prayer in order to keep the Egyptians from coming out of the arms of behind them and Hashem responded and he said Lemani Lemani yes I'll do for me not for you that's the pasuk in Yeshaya now the Gemara brings a number of opinions as to when this was said but they all follow the same pattern. There's some tefillah that was said where the Kaisal said, Leilanu, not for us, and Hashem responded with, Lamani, Lamani. So what was it? So the next opinion is of Yehuda says it was Yeshua and Kaisal when they stood against the kings of Canaan. Again, same back and forth, Leilanu to help us beat them, and Lamani, Lamani, Hashem says, I'll help you. Rebbe Zamadai says it was Devaira and Barak when they stood against Sisra. Um, again, the same back and forth applies. Rebbe Zamadai says it was Chizkiah and his men when they stood against Sanchei 
Rabbi Kiva says, it was Hanani, Mishael, and Azariah when they were facing off with Nebuchad and Netzar, who threw them into the fire. Rabbi Yosei Gili says, it was Mordechai and Esther against Taman. And the Chachamim, the Brisa ends off, says that it was the Nevi'im who set this up for Kari Sol in each and every time and season, like we saw earlier. Whenever anything happens, say this tefillah, and after you are redeemed and saved, say it again to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu as an expression of praise. Now, the Gemara again discusses the word Halalukah. Now, the word Halalukah often appears at the end of a chapter of Tehillim, and it often appears at the beginning of a chapter of Tehillim. Now, when you have two chapters, one after the other, if the first one ends with Halalukah and the next one begins with Halalukah, you know that each Halalukah belongs to one. One belongs at the end of the previous one, at the first one. One belongs at the beginning of the second one. The problem is that there are quite a few places in which the word Halalukah appears kind of between two chapters. And the question is, is it the end of the first or the beginning of the second? So the Gemara says, we have a number of questions here. We're not sure which one is which. So the Gemara says, the Machik is between Rav Chizda and Rav and Rabba Bar Rav Huna, what it generally is. Rav Chizda says it's the last word in the first chapter. Rav Bar Rav Huna says it's the first word in the second chapter. Now, the Gemara says that, uh, Rav Chizda said, I saw the Tehillim in the house of Rav Hanan Bar Rav, and he wasn't sure either, apparently, because when he had uh, two chapters in a row like this, the word Hallelujah was written midway, it was written in the break, and it, w- it was not stuck to either of them. Obviously, he wasn't sure either which one it belongs to. Now, the Gemara says that there's a long list of cases in which there is no machlokas, and it is clear. And they are as follows. Um... When the end of Ashri, where it ends off, then it says Hallelujah. That definitely belongs to the next chapter, which begins um, Hallelujah, 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 Nafshi es Hashem. As a matter of fact, all the ones on the list, everybody agrees the word Hallelujah belongs to the beginning of the second chapter. Um, the next one is in. Um, Russia, Kiyira, Vachas, Venomas Tavas, Rishayim, which is Tehillim, uh, Kofiud, Bez, the word Hallelujah, that uh, belongs to the next chapter, which is the first of Hallel, which is Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Avde Hashem. Next one they all agree about is when it says, um, that it is Hallelujah that belongs to the next chapter, and that is it begins Hallelujah Kitayv Hashem. Next case is added by people called Kroy, scholars of uh, Psukim. When it says that's the end of a chapter. That's the end of Kof Yud. The next one begins um, Hallelujah Oide Hashem Bechol Leif. Uh, also, at the end of the next chapter, which is 111, which is Kofiud Aleph, um, it ends off, Hallelujah begins, belongs to the next chapter, where it says, Hallelujah Ashrei Ish. Now, the Gemara wants to say, maybe this discussion as to whether the word Hallelujah belongs to the end of the previous chapter or the beginning of the next chapter is a Machlikes Tanaim. What Machlikes Tanaim? We saw earlier there's a Machlikes between Mesel and Meshamai. How many chapters of Tehillim you say in the Haggadah? Do you say just the first one? Uh, how many chapters of Hal do you say in the Haggadah? Do you say just the first one? That's Beishami's opinion. Or do you say the first two? That is Basil's opinion. Now, there's a Machlokes Tanaim, how we precisely quote this Machlokes be, between Basil and Beishami. Do we say it... The way it's expressed is that you say it up until, and then we quote the last Pasuk that you say. Beishami, we say the last Pasuk in the first chapter of Hallel, and Basil we say the last passing in the second chapter of Hal. Now, in um, the other Tanaim, it says we say up until, and we quote the next Pasuk, the Pasuk beginning the chapter which we do not say. So let's focus on Beishamai's opinion, because that's where we'll have this Machok is over here. According to one Tana, when Beishamai expressed their opinion, and they say we only say the first chapter of Hallel, they say we go up until Im Habanim Semecha. That's the end of the first chapter. According to the other Tana, Beishamai say, no, we go up until Betzei Sisra Mim which is the beginning of the second chapter. So Gemara says, 
What about the word halaluka that is between the words? It's, it's emabanim semecha, then it says halaluka, then it says b'tais yisrael mimitzayim. Obviously, the one who says we go up until emabanim semecha is saying that halaluka belongs to the next chapter. That's why he says you stop by emabanim semecha. The one that says no, you go up until b'tais yisrael mimitzayim is saying that the word halaluka belongs to the part that you do say that's before. Gemara says, no, not necessarily. That's not what they're arguing about. They're arguing about when you generally say up until, do you mean advad v'chlal? Including what you said, or ad velo ad bechal. So the one that says you go up until ema banim semecha, so that's ad ad bechal. You go up until and including there. Generally, when you say as far as you go, you mean including it. I couldn't say until but says Yisrael mir tzayim because that would mean that you say that pasuk also. The other one says no. Ad means up until but not including. Therefore, I tell you up until but says Yisrael, not including but says Yisrael. But not up and I couldn't say up until ema banim semecha because then you would think that you stopped just once before the end of the pasuk itself. Now the Gemara asks on both of these, but both tonight should say the word halaluka. If you're saying up until Eme Bonim Semecha, say up until Eme Bonim Semecha, Hallelujah, why well, just leave the word out? And if you uh, want to begin with Batesi So, so say Hallelujah, Batesi So, why do you leave the word out? Obviously, you're trying to say that the word Haluka belongs to the other Pusik. So, Gemara says it's a Kasha, it's a Kasha. We'll leave that as a Kasha. It's not clear why they don't say that, but that is that, that we're still assuming that this Machokis is not about where the word Haluka goes, and it's not the same Machokis as Rabbah and Rav Chizda had. All right, now the Gemara has concluded this discussion. The Gemara refers back to the uh, end of the Haggadah, which we concluded with a bracha of redemption, a bracha of Geula. This is the end of the Haggadah before Mitzi Matzah, the end of Magit. So Gemara says you end up with Geula. So the Gemara now is going to discuss a number of different brachas and their slight variations in their text, brachas which are similar and have slight variations. The Gemara will explain what the variations are four. As far as Geula, there are three times we say a bracha of Geula. Once here by Magid, once in the middle of Shema Nasri where we say Gal Yisrael, and once at the beginning of Shema, of Shema Nasri, the last bracha, Merchaz Kriyishma, before we say Shema Nasri, where we end off when we say Gal Yisrael. So Gemara says these two, the Haggadah and uh, we end off with Al Yisrael. In the middle of Shemayin Esrei, we say Goy El Yisrael, the Redeemer, not the one who past tense redeemed Yisrael, but the one who is redeeming Yisrael. What's the reason? Gemara says Shemayin Esrei is a request. We are asking Kadosh Baruch Hu to continue redeeming us and to redeem us in the future. Therefore, we use a present tense language. Not it's not a praise for a past tense. Gemara says a very similar kind of thing you find as far as Kiddush, Kiddush on Shabbos. There are two ways which we can say Kiddush. There's once in Kiddush, and there's once in Shemana Esrei. In uh, Shemana Esrei, we say, Kaddisheinu b'mitzvah Bless us with your mitzvahs. Sanctify us with your mitzvahs. In Kiddush, we say, Asher Kiddushonu b'mitzvahs, of which you blessed us. Past tense. Mars says again, same thing. Shemana Esrei, we're asking, and therefore we say, Kaddisheinu, please bless us. Kiddush, we're thanking, or praising, so we say, Asher Kiddushonu, that you blessed us. Now, the Gemara says, uh, on the subject of Kiddush, you have to make sure to mention Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim in Kiddush. How do you know? The Pasuk describing the mitzvah of mentioning Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim says, Laman Tizgar Ziyam Tzayischav Mi Mitzrayim. And the Pasuk describing the mitzvah of Kiddush and Shabbos and Yantav says, Zachor Ziyam Shabbos Lakachai. So Zachor, Tizgar are linked to teach you that you should mention Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim in Kiddush itself. Now the Gemara discusses a number of other brachas that have similar language. As far as the growth of the uh, Malchus Beis David. We have a bracha that says Matzmiach Karen Yeshua. Hashem is he present tense flourishes the pride of salvation. Um, but in the Haftarah we just say the in our bracha at the end of the Haftarah we just say Mogain David the shield of David. That's a difference over there. Now the Gemara says where do we get this language of Mogain David the shield of David? So that comes from the Pasuk that says, Hashem promises, David, that I'm going to make you a great name like the great ones. Hashem is saying that I'm going to give you a Mogain, a David, like I gave Mogain Avram in the bracha of Avos to Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Now the Gemara says Mogain Avram is only Avram. But these all are really brachos to Avram. When it says, Elokei Avraham, that's part of the promise where Hashem said, Ve'eschal Gagad, I'll make him to a great nation. That Christ will say in Shemon Eser, Elokei Avraham. Now, later Hashem said to Avram, I'll give you another bracha, that Ve'avarechecha, I will bless you. That means that even your son Yitzchak will have my name on him, that they'll say Elokei Yitzchak. And even greater a bracha is, Ve'agad L'Shemecha, make your name great, that this actual bracha will continue to your grandson Yaakov, and they'll say Elokei Yaakov. 
Now, says the Gemara, you may think that they'll all be included in the end of the bracha, the chasima, but it's not true. It's only going to be you, and they'll only end off with Mugain Avraham, because Veheye bracha, you will be a bracha, you'll be a greater bracha than all of them. All right, now the Gemara brings a machlok, says, what is the proper text of the bracha of Kiddusha, of, of, of uh, Kiddush, uh, th- that's said in Kiddush uh, over a cup of wine, and Kiddush, which is said in Shul and Shemayna Esrei. So Gemara says it's a machlok is between Rava and the Save de Pumpadisa, the elders of Pumpadisa. How does the machlokis work? As follows. The elders of Pumpadisa said that there's a difference between the language of Kiddush and Shabbos and the language of Kiddush on Yom Tov. However, Kiddush and Shabbos is the same in Shemun Esrei and Kiddush over wine, and Kiddush and Yom Tov is the same in Kiddush and Shemun Esrei over wine. The only difference is Shabbos and Yom Tov. What's the difference? Shabbos, we say Mekadosh is Shabbos, and Rav explains that the reason for that is because the Kiddush of Shabbos comes from Hashem. Hashem set up that every seventh day is Shabbos. There's no variables there. However, Kiddush of Yom Tov, we say Mekadosh Yisrael Vazmanim, you bless the Yisrael and the time is because Kla Yisrael have to be the one to establish when Yom Tov is by uh, establishing the length of the month and the length of the year. They have the ability to add a day, take away a day from the months and to add a month to the years. So now, Rav says, I disagree. And I say that there are three ways that you end it off. And it works as follows. Um, in the Shemayna Esra, you end off Mekadesh Yisrael. Just Mekadesh Yisrael. Doesn't matter, Shabbos Yom Tov, when you say the bracha of Kiddush HaSayim, you say Mekadesh Yisrael. In Kiddush, so then on Shabbos you say Mekadesh Shabbos, and on Yom Tov you say Mekadesh Yisrael V'Hazmanim. And what's my reason? So the reason is, is that there's a difference between Shemona Esrei and Kiddush. Kiddush is a private thing you do at home. Shemona Esrei is a public thing. In public, you say Mekadosh Yisrael. That's what you're at Mekadosh. Uh, privately at home, Shemona Esrei, okay, so there, uh, privately at home, Kiddush, so there you'll say Mekadosh Shabbos for Shabbos, and Mekadosh Yisrael Vazmanim for Yom Tov. So Gemara says that this is uh, not acceptable. The Gemara doesn't like this approach because the Gemara says sometimes you'll say Kiddush in public in shul and sometimes you'll say Shemana in private at home. So why should we make a differentiation like that? The Gemara says that Rava doesn't uh, hold to that because Rava says you go over, you follow its primary use. Shemana Esri is primarily said in shul, in public, and Kiddush is primarily said at home privately. So on the topic, the Gemara brings an insight. The Gemara says that Ula, who was the son of Rav, went to be the Chazin in front of Rava, and he said it with the, with the minig of the Save de Pompadis. He said, Mekadosh Yisrael, Mekadosh Yisrael, Vazmanim. He didn't say just Mekadosh Yisrael. So Rava didn't say anything. So obviously Rava apparently retracted his opinion. The Gemara says that Rav Nassan, his father of Huna, went and say, and he said, also like the Save de Pompadisa, and Rav Papa praised him. Uh, Ravina said, I once went to Surah to be in front of Maremar, and the Shliach Tzibra went to say it, and he said it in the in the opinion of the Save de Pompadisa, and people tried to stop him. They wanted him to do like Rava, and Maremar said, no, leave him alone. The Allah is like Save de Pompadisa, and they did leave him alone. Okay, now we get to our next Mishnah near the end of the Daf, and it teaches us about the third cup of wine and the fourth cup of wine. So you pour the third cup of wine and you say Berchus HaMazen over it, and you pour the fourth cup of wine and you complete Hallel um, over that, and you say something called Birchas Hashir. The Gemara says, what's Birchas Hashir? Birchas Hashir, the Gemara says, Machlokes, either it refers to the Brach at the end of Hallel, or it refers to Nishmas. Anyway, the Mishnah continues and says that somebody who wants to drink between the cups, so between the third and fourth cup, you should not drink, lest you become drunk and not be able to finish halal. During the other cups, you could. It's a machlokes yishayim. During the other cups, do we mean between the third and the? Do we mean between the second and third, or do we mean between the first and the second, and the second and the third? Um, the opinion is between the second and third is the understanding is that when you drink during the meal with food, it doesn't make you drunk. Therefore, there's no concern you can end up being too drunk to say. Uh, halal. So now the Gemara says, um, why are we saying a cup of wine over halal? This seems to, uh, why are we saying a cup of wine, why do we need a cup of wine to say Berch Muslim? This seems to indicate that we paskin Berch HaZemazon to Nakais. You need a cup of wine to say Berch HaZemazon. The Gemara says, not necessarily, it could just be that there's a mitzvah of four cups of wine. On the Pesach Seder, we know that there's a separate sources that should be, that there, there should be four cups of wine. So what are we going to do? Drink one randomly? So we have one, so we use it for Berch HaZemazon. No reason why not. But the, every time you bench, you need to have a cup of wine that you do not necessarily see. 
Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.